Well, hello, welcome to the video. This is a strange one because today, as I record this, is Friday the 20th of September 2024. And yesterday, Thursday 19th, logic tells me, the Cricketers, the venue I was involved in in the 1980s, most of all, was actually knocked down. This may not appear to be much because I haven't been inside it for over 30 years. Recently, it's been a sad, empty building, boarded up, but now it's gone. Let's go back a bit. Right, what happened was, it's about 1980, 1981, I first became aware of the Cricketers, an act I was agent for, Trimmer and Jenkins, who were two guys from the band Burlesque. Who cares? Got a gig at the Cricketers, and I went there with them, and we had a jolly good time. And then a little bit later, the guy who booked it, whose name has gone completely out of my head, he was Sade's guitarist and musical director, and I believe boyfriend for a while. He booked Gino Washington and the Ram Jam Band off me, and so I went there on a Saturday night, and we had a, another good time. And so, a couple of years later, a friend of mine, Joe Pierce, who's putting on prestige gigs half a month, putting it, was asked by Kenny, the landlord of the Cricketers, to put on shows. And he put me on the door there. And eventually, I have mentioned this in another video, and there'll be a link to that at the end to explain what happened. I basically took over booking the band. It's too brutal. And then, over like a very short period of time and I moved in and I lived there till September 1990 when we were forced to leave because the rent was being put up. Again all this is in another video so we don't really need to go into everything yet. Now I tell you what I did do a little troll because there were lots of fans played obviously there were fans every night and at Sunday lunchtime so it's seven nights a week we were open for practically every single day apart from Christmas Day and Boxing Day. It's about 400 gigs every year and over over the years I was there, I've made a list, and I've got to refer to this because obviously I am actually quite old, I can't remember things. So these are just off the top of my head. So Butch Hancock and Jimmy Dale, Gilmore from Texas. <laughs> Feel Good, and also Wilco Johnson, of course. Slim Gaylord, who was like a fantastic 1950s American jazz jump jive, I think he did, and he was um, very famous at the time. Flatfoot Flugy with the Floy Floy, cement mixer, putty putty, fried chicken o rooty, mozza balls, when the banana skins are falling, dunking bagel. These are the magisterial compositions of the great Slim Gaylord. Apart from being a multi-instrumentalist and singer, Slim invented a whole hip language and is the possessor of a truly surreal, freewheeling imagination. We have a very groovy, very mellow, runny session cooked up. We'd like to open up with a little specialty from that new picture, The Road to Hoboken, Rooney. Eddie and the Hot Rods. Why don't you tell me what you are gonna Giant Sand, Steve Marriott from The Small Faces. Screaming Lord Such, I've done a video about him. I've done a video about most of these people, actually. The House Martins, Dean Friedman. The Moodists, Zoot Money, who recently died, sadly. The Pretty Things, who I went on to be their agent. But very good band, he said. I must do a video about them quite soon. The Pirates, Len Bright Combo, featuring Reckless Eric. When I was a young boy, a woman said to me. The Hicksons, the Screaming Blue Messiahs. Dr. John from New Orleans. Surgeon Knight. Surgeon Knight. The Groundhogs featuring the great Tony McPhee. I've done a video about him. Georgie Fame in the Blue Flames. Oh. 
The Pogues played a week there for, for me. To, well, basically, it's a long story. It's in another video. You can hear about that. So if you watch all my videos, then you just get all this information. So if you're not already subscribed, it would be a great favor to me. And I think you might enjoy them. If you're enjoying this, and if you enjoy the concept of all this music and the history, and because it's not just about stuff I did, it's about things people told me and what have you. So please subscribe and press the notification bell. And if you like the videos, please like them press the thumbs up thing and of course comment let me know what you think tell me how terrible you think I am now back to the list of course a list a man reading a list on a video that cannot be boring of course can it not much longer now we've done the pogues haven't we the larks half man half biscuit they did actually play I looked it up Frank Sidebottom <laughs> He played there quite a lot. That was his London home for most of the 80s. Roy Harper, Jesus Jones. Poison Girls, Happy Mondays, UK Sub. In Spiral Carpets, Laurel Aitken, the great Scar legend. I think Prince Buster played there as well, but I can't find any reference to that. So rather than put myself out on a limb and lie, I'll just pretend that he might have done it. Desmond Decker definitely played there. I was Desmond's agent and friend, and he put on some fantastic shows. <laughs> He's no longer with us, I'm afraid, but he was such a good performer. I mean, his songs as well. Whoa, Desmond Decker, brilliant. Nico from the Velvet Underground, the model from New York. John Cooper Clark, that petrol emotion. which is the songwriters out of The Undertones. They played the first time and everybody was there, wow, thought, wow, they are really good. And the next time that they played, literally hundreds of people turned up and we were absolutely rammed, turned people away. And I think they had to stop playing there in the end because they were just too big. And then Carter, the unstoppable sex machine, who always complained that the venue wasn't really right for them. But they were our friends and we got on well. So that was the Drickers. There's a great lot of stuff. We had to leave in September 1990, as I say. And what that was, there had a lot of bikers that moved in, the road rats. They weren't particularly good. They pulled out all the memorabilia that we had and just painted it all black. Actually, they did ask me to book the bands for them for a while. So I did for a little while, but then they stopped paying the bands and didn't pay me and stuff. So I stopped. Then they tried to do a fraud for the insurance they went i think without paying rent for a while then a jamaican policeman moved in thinking he was buying into a cricketing legend of course without bands there was no trade whatsoever there so um, he quickly lost his shirt then a portuguese restaurant moved in they apparently were paying a pound a year rent that's how bad it was and then i think in 2002 it closed down for good some people did squat it. I think were, what do you call those people? Surfers, not um, with skateboards. They converted it into a skateboard thing for a while, but then they got um, kicked out. It's been empty since then. So yesterday, the 19th of September, 2024, it was finally knocked down. So RIP the cricketers. Well, thanks for watching. If you want to know more, there's a link to a video up there which will tell you all about my time at the cricketers. And um, thank you for watching. Goodbye.